This is a tutorial of the California Residential Listing Agreement, CAR Form RLA, and I will go through it quickly so you can watch the video and feel comfortable drafting it on your own. When you go into Zip Forms and you select the RLA, you'll see it's actually a form bundle with all these disclosures front loaded. So we start here with the disclosure regarding real estate agency relationship, two page form, seller is going to sign. You're going to put your brokerage name, license ID, your name, license number, and you're going to sign. You do nothing on page two. Fair housing, two page form, your seller signs. Simple stuff. Possible representation of more than one buyer seller. Seller signs, your brokerage information, your signature, and we move on. Last disclosure is the wire fraud advisory and it just requires a seller signature. And then we arrive at the listing agreement. All right, very quickly, I wanna tell you about Open Home, 100% commission, best commission plan in the industry, unlimited transactions, unlimited sales price, just $49 a month, no transaction fee, E&O insurance included. If you're interested in more information, please visit openhometeam.com forward slash join. All right, with the listing agreement, we start with the date that we're drafting the form. We put up here today's date, the seller's name, the name of our brokerage, a beginning and ending date. Now, if you don't have these dates in here, this form can be nullified. So it's very important that you have a start and end date in the listing agreement, crucial. Property address, Pretty simple and straightforward. Assessor's parcel number, that can be retrieved. On the MLS, you can access the tax data through a solution like Realist, for example. You can go to the county tax assessors and look at the property. You can ask the seller or ask the seller for a copy of the tax bill. So there are multiple ways to find it. If you truly cannot find it, well, you can still do this agreement. Leave it blank here, but you really should come back to it and add it later. All right, listing price. I just put in some made up number, 900,000. And when you put in this numerical figure, a text value automatically populates in zip forms. Listing terms, so I would leave this blank if I was filling it out. If there was something that I couldn't fit somewhere else that was that had some sort of special modification, maybe let's say you're reducing the commission if you are a dual agent or something. I mean, you can add it here, it's auxiliary space, but <clears throat> or some change to the, to the list price, but these are for special circumstances. So we're gonna leave it blank, but it's there if you need it. This is very important. 3A, seller is paying broker as compensation, 6%. So I just put in a 6% commission. Now, this is a mistake I see agents make all the time. They put in just the listing side, maybe two and a half or three right here. And then down here, they put in the buyer's agent side. This needs to be the gross total number. And I'll explain when we get down a little bit lower here, but it's very important you put the gross commission amount. If it's a flat dollar amount, you can check this box and put the dollar amount here. <clears throat> if, you want, if you want to add anything extra, like I have a transaction fee here, uh, I put 395 because this and is adding it to either the, either the percentage or the flat fee. So I put the transaction fee <clears throat> Now that can go to my transaction coordinator. It's just another charge where I'm passing one of my costs on. And so the broker can collect it. It'll offset my cost to do the transaction as an agent. Now down here, I'll put 90 calendar days. And the short, the short of it is that this protects you if, if a, a buyer or someone was procured during your listing period, during your marketing efforts, and they come back after your listing expires to buy the home, this protects you. That's why I put in 90 days. And you can read the paragraph. And if you want more information, you can leave a comment. <clears throat> now here there's an auxiliary line, seller agrees to pay broker, and there's just an empty space. I wrote in an example, if you were to utilize it, $5,000 bonus of property sells over the list price. But usually I leave this blank when I'm filling it out. I'm just showing you how you would utilize this line. Now this is the other important part. So 3A, we collect gross commission. 3D, this is where we're pledging the amount 
we're offering to a buyer's agent should we have to cooperate with the buyer's agent in, through the MLS typically. So I put 3% because typically it's half. Now, the, the problem that I see is when agents put just the buyer's agent commission here and just the listing agent commission here, technically speaking, that leaves zero for the listing agent because this number down here is subtracted from this number. So if you're only collecting 3% and you are pledging 3% here to the buyer's agent, this form is not charging the seller for any, any listing commission that you're keeping. Big problem. And this is a very common mistake that I see. So it's important you put the gross here and know that this is being deducted. All right. And this just explains offering the buyer's agent commission. Boilerplate text, seller initials, we move on. Are there certain fixtures that should be staying but are actually going or personal property that's going to be included even though it's not a fixture? You're gonna add any sort of special property here. If there's a leased item or leaned item, such as solar, maybe you have a leased solar system and they put a lien on title, you check those boxes. This is, this is more important when the purchase agreement comes around, but it's good to know when you're getting the listing what you're working with and to have it in writing so you understand if the property has something like this. Down here, we get into the MLS territory. You put the name of the MLS you're gonna list it on. I put the one I was, that I would theoretically be using. Down here, we have a box where the seller's acknowledging that they're informed about the benefit of the MLS. And this is another area of confusion. So, so the, as, as a realtor, you have an obligation to enter a, your listing into the MLS immediately. Now, the natural question that comes up when someone hears that is, well, what if my listing's not ready? What if we need two weeks to move something out or to clean up? Well, the MLS's answer to that is there's a coming soon status. So they want you to enter as active coming soon or I should say just coming soon, then that status will change to active when that two week period is up. Now, another, a, a, another agent might say, all right, well, I don't want to do coming soon. How about we just do an exclusion of the MLS? <clears throat> well, if you do an exclusion or you do use a car for a form sell, then you're prohibited from doing any public marketing whatsoever. And that includes even, even emailing to a list of buyers in your own newsletter or sphere of influence or whatever list you have. So just wanna let you know, I mean, these are the rules and they've created them to eliminate pocket listings. I don't make them if you don't like them, complain to a local board, but I'm just telling you that that uh, technically speaking, there's, there's, there's really no way to exclude a property from the MLS and then still market it. And when I say market it, I mean even putting your sign out front in advance. Technically, that's prohibited. Again, don't like the rules, you complain about them, but I'm just telling you as a broker that has to deal with compliance, that's how it works. So if you're, if you're the only time I, I see it legitimately being excluded from the MLS is if, there's, if the seller has already produced a buyer and you're just coming in to facilitate the transaction. Because without that, how on earth are you going to publicly market a property? If you have questions about this, leave a comment and I'll answer so I don't digress too long. Seller initials, the bottom here, we continue on. All right, and let's see, boilerplate text. So I'm filling this out myself, I'm just scrolling through. This is what I'd be doing. I'd have the seller sign, or initial, excuse me. I'm still scrolling through. If the seller doesn't want a, a key box, lockbox then you can check the box here if not by default there's going to be a sign installed which is down here and a lockbox installed here by default <clears throat> and that's it if there's a trust i might check a box if there's a trust advisory if there's a seller contingency i'd add it here and finally one last thing if the seller is a trust or a corporation or an LLC check this box and do a representative capacity form RCSD form and that basically indicates who the individual is signing on behalf of the company because sometimes I see people write a company name here and they'll write like you know ABC LLC or ABC Corp and then the signature will say ABC Corp 
Well, there's no such thing. You need to have an individual authorized by the entity signing. So Sally Seller would be signing out on behalf of this the seller. So the seller might be ABC Corp and then Sally Seller signs her individual name, but you need to check this box and do this RCSD form. So that's only if the, if the seller is an entity, because if, if it's the entity name, the seller name here in print needs to be the corp or LLC or trust. And then, but the signature is of an individual that's authorized by that entity. If you have any questions about that, please leave a comment. Then you put your information here and you're done. Now there's a seller advisory. Again, boilerplate text, seller initials, and you guys sign at the bottom. And that's just informing your seller disclaimers effectively. So your seller has been informed about things that pertain to the transaction so that you can't, um, you're less likely to get uh, accused of, of not informing your seller. So all in all, what is this? A 14 page form, gosh. Every year, these get longer and longer, but that's it. That is the listing agreement. If you have questions, please leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer. Thanks for watching, and I do hope you found this informative.